I want to do a couple more examples of finding the inverse if it exists. And I've got these two examples here, and I want to do both of these by hand. The second one down here where we've got a 4x4, four four, you might think, uh, that's a lot of work. But um, I, I still want to do it by hand. I want to show you something interesting that happens. So first up, let's do this uh, first one by hand. Find the inverse of this if it exists. Now we could use the formula that we saw in a previous video, but I'm just going to use the technique that we've seen here. So let's see, if we want to row reduce this, um, I'm going to swap the rows and get 2, 5, 0, 1, and then 4, 10, 1, 0. I'm going to use my 2 as a pivot. I'm going to do row 2 minus twice row 1. So it's going to be 4 minus 4, 10 minus 5, and then, um, I honestly, I don't even have to finish this. Uh, I'll, I'll finish the row out, though. Uh, 1 minus 0, and 0 minus 2. But I don't have to finish. Um, there's no way that I can continue row reducing this thing and get an identity matrix. If I continued, the, the only steps left would be to divide the top row by, well, well, we might as well do that. The only thing left to do would be to do row 1 divided by 2. And that would give you 1, uh, 5 halves, 0, 1 half, and then um, 0, 0, 1, negative 2. So this is in reduced row echelon form, but this over here is not an identity. So this tells us that it does not exist. All right. Um, this matrix down here, find the inverse of this thing if it exists. OK, so the first thing I would do here is tack on, let me do this in black, tack on a 4 by 4 identity. Now, I could start off and um, use the one up here as a pivot, but if you look at this matrix, notice something here. These two rows are exactly the same. And so if I were to do row uh, four minus row three, then row four is going to turn into zero, 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 and then zero, zero, negative one, one. As soon as you get all zeros over here, there's no way you can um, row reduce this and get an identity matrix out of it. So, um, well, how, how do I know that? Well, remember, when you row reduce something, any all zero rows wind up on the bottom. So we've got an all zero row here, and um, it's going to stay there on the bottom, and there's no way to... Um, there's no way to put a 1 in the last position without messing something else up. So in other words, we're done here. This thing does not have an inverse. The inverse does not exist. So let's scroll back up for a second. On this example, we had 4, 10, 2, 5. Notice um, one row is a multiple of the other. If you take 2, 5 and double it, you get 4, 10. This is not as obvious, but one column is also a multiple of the other. If you take 4 and multiply it by, well, 10 over 4, 5 halves, if you, you get 10. And if you multiply 2 by 5 halves, you get uh, 5. So there are some rules we have that will tell us when a matrix doesn't have an inverse. So A is not invertible if any of these things are true. And it turns out these things are all really um, kind of well, they're not equivalent to each other, but each time I go from one to the next, it's getting a little bit more general. If, if the matrix A contains a row or a column of all zeros, then um, it can't have an inverse. If it contains a repeated row or a repeated column, like what happened uh, up here, 
then its inverse doesn't exist. If one row or column is the sum of two other rows or columns, then um, it, it doesn't have an inverse. And also, if one row or column is a linear combination of the others, in other words, if you could add some some multiples of the rows together and get a, one of the other rows, that would not have a, a, an inverse. Now, these things, these are like all the things that um, row reduction sifts out of a, of a matrix. So, um, Anyway, these are these are good things to look for that'll tip you off that something doesn't have an inverse.